John Morgan of Morgan and Morgan. There he is. He's back Woo-hoo! to make us smarter about law. What up, John Morgan? How are things in Nash, Vegas? You know what? They're doing pretty good. Where? What part of the world is the well-traveled John Morgan in today? Tonight, today, I am in New Hampshire, looking out at the lake. <laughs> And waiting for the Toby Keith concert this weekend here okay. in New Hampshire. This is a this is a country state up here. This is a country world. That's how I like Willie to Willie Nelson at it. next weekend. And I bet you have backstage passes to, to all this stuff, don't you? Probably for Willie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure about that. Play poker with him in Maui. And I'm sure that you have a haze about that game. I had a haze about that game, um, and it was the last time I was there. Paul Simon actually came and played. What? And uh, but yeah, there was there we were we listened to Willie Road whatever the Willie Road serious music, and we have sandwiches and and other refreshments. Other refreshments. I think we can know what that. Got is. it. Okay, listen. <laughs> We love when you come on because you shed light onto situations that we just don't know the answer to. For example, Amy got in a wreck, and a guy tried to pay her in cash on the spot. What do you do if you get into a wreck, and they don't have insurance, but they want to give you cash right there? Well, a ca- cash without a release is, is just cash gone, but I wouldn't take it. What I would tell you is, if they don't have insurance, maybe you do, and you have what's called uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage. But usually the people are trying to pay for cash. They have bigger problems than no insurance, like no driver's license, like warrant for their arrest, like escapee from prison. Oh, my. <laughs> so it's usually not about insurance. It's usually about something else. And you did not take the cash. Yeah, I almost did just because I, well, I didn't want to take anything. I just felt so bad because he was just so insistent that we not call the police. And I, of course, like was feeling really bad for him, even though the wreck was totally his fault. But yeah, I didn't take it. But he was only offering me $200 and I got (laughs) the damage assessed and it's a $5,000 thing to fix. And yeah, I'm having to go through my insurance to do it. And he might have insurance, you know. Don't don't let that don't let the two hundred dollars because a lot of people are thinking, hey, I'd rather pay two hundred dollars and not have my rates go up. True. A lot of people try to make a bit a business decision at the scene of the accident. Another situation that happened here: lunchbox on our show dented a car with a shopping cart as he was trying to squeeze between two cars in a parking lot. Is he legally responsible to pay for that damage? Yes, he is, and most likely his homeowner's insurance will cover that claim. Homeowner's? Even he, though, he's in a grocery store. Even though it was a basket from a grocery store. How does homeowners cover that? Homeowners cover slander. So you guys, if, when you all are slandering people, if you ever get sued, <laughs> and I understand you all do quite a bit of slander down yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, when you slander someone, many times your homeowners will cover your the cost of defense and your claim for slander. Oh. How did you it's feel? All the, all the fine print in those homeowners' policies. How did you feel whenever the, the people sued Subway for not having enough tuna in their tuna sandwich and there was a class action lawsuit? Did you feel like that was warranted? It could be. I mean, you know, there's a lot of of BS class actions out there, but on the other hand, well, first of all, it, it tastes like cat food to me. That's why I don't eat Subway subs. I do not stand by that statement. Uh, I don't know about that. You may have to bleep <laughs> that out. That's slander. That John Morgan, that's slander. <laughs> yeah. His homeowners will cover it. <laughs> well, look, slander there's is one thing, but uh, truth is an absolute defense to slander. But, no, uh, seriously, the, the, it, it probably is a claim because 
are you really getting tuna fish? Are you really getting enough tuna fish? What does it say on the side of We trust what it says on the side of the package. But I would say, by and large, there's a lot of class actions that's just really more for the lawyers than for the consumers. On right now with John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. If I go to a restaurant and I burn the top of my mouth on a really hot piece of pizza, do I have a case? Probably not. The famous McDonald's case. Now remember, that's what we all that's what we all think about the famous McDonald's case where the woman got the hot coffee. What you got to remember about that case is McDonald's was heating that coffee up at like 140 degrees. It was steaming hot. The reason they did it was because by the time people got the, back to the office, the coffee was cold, so they kept heating it up hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. They had had many cases like that before, but they never turned the heat down on the coffee. If you Google that case and look at the woman's burns, you will not believe what happened to her legs. And so that verdict came after many, many bites of the apple where McDonald's didn't change their conduct, and the verdict was reduced substantially. But if a pizza place over and over and over was cooking their pizza so hot that the cheese was burning off the flesh on the roof of your mouth and they never changed conduct, then you might have a case, but not a one-off. You know, it's always, at least in my lifetime, I've been told if there's an accident, the person who rear-ends the person is at fault. Is that true? It's always the person's fault who does the rear-ending? No, because there's there's a big defense out there called sudden stop. And listen, how many of us have had people suddenly stop in front of us? So you got people who are not paying attention ahead of you suddenly stop. All of a sudden, you're caught off guard, and you don't have time to react. So... But what was the rule? What was the rule in driver's ed? We're supposed to be one car length behind per ten miles, 10 miles an hour, per hour, yeah. whatever. So I, I've got an A in driver's ed at Winter Park High School. <laughs> so sudden stop won't affect you if you're not up if you if you follow that rule. This is not injury related, but if I were to win the lottery, what's the first step you would recommend for me to do legally? Uh, if you are, are you married? I am. Okay, I was going to suggest you go to Vegas to the Bunny Ranch, but I'll, <laughs> what? I'll, what? I'll oh scratch God. that. Uh, the first thing I would do is I would <laughs> go around my family and give them, make them as whole as I possibly could. If they had debt, I'd end their debt. If they had financial troubles, I'd end their troubles. And then I'd go to I'd go to Europe on a vacation. But legally, if I win millions of dollars, should I call an attorney to say, "Hey, watch over this," or do I just run wild and free, like you're saying? I wouldn't run wild and free. I'd I wouldn't call a lawyer because I don't know what a lawyer. I mean, what is a lawyer going to do? Go help you pick up the check? <laughs> but but I, I'd be happy to represent you, and I'll only take twenty five percent. I do because want because we're friends. That, yes, we're of course. I, you you all will always have the Morgan and Morgan friends and family discount. So, if you or anybody on the, at the station wins the lottery, I'll do it for twenty five percent, maybe less. Wow! Thank you very much, <laughs> so, uh, Morgan maybe, and Morgan. Maybe less. They're offering a hundred thousand dollars in a contest for a new jingle. They're looking for a catchy tune, and not just and he loves music, but not just for his own enjoyment. So, big prize, a hundred thousand bucks, and so. Do you want to play yours, Eddie? Absolutely. I want to let him know that I'm in on this contest. So, uh, Mr. Morgan, we actually have Eddie, who is a real musician, who has made a jingle. Would you like to hear it right now? I would. Okay, here we go. And how long is it, Raimundo? 30. It's, oh, it's 30. You're on a 30-second jingle? Yeah, well, jingle? listen, here. I want, I want him to know this before he goes and listen to it. There are multiple jingles in one. I, uh, part of the rules was you have to put certain slogans in there, like, uh -huh. for the people and dial 
pound law, that's all. Uh -huh. So those are all in there. But think of this as different ways you can use this slogan. Are you prepared to hear a 30 second? You're talking about, I think he's talking about jingles within the jingle. That's what I'm talking about, John Morgan. You know what I'm talking about. Jingles okay. within the jingle. I love it. Ray, uh, let's make sure he can hear through the phone. Just hear, let him hear a second of it. Okay, can you hear that? That thing? Very well. Okay, here we go. Here's Eddie's 30 second <laughs> jingle. Go ahead. That's all. Not your fault. Dial power, that's all. We will fight to do what's right for the people, for the people. Morgan and Morgan. Dial power, that's all. Come on! <laughs> I, I, that is excellent. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Good job. That is that. Now, is he a professional? Does no. He, does he write for Garth and some of the other Nashville no, people? No, he works on the show. He's my producer, my best friend. So Yeah, I just sit right here with Bobby, John. That's it. Very talented. We're going to submit. Can, can he submit that legally? Yeah, because he's not a professional. I mean, you got you can't be, you know, Willie Nelson can't do it, but you can. And uh, you know what I liked about it is you, we've had – you cannot imagine what a hundred thousand dollars will do in America. We have got so many uh, entries, and I'll tell you, some of them are really, really very good. But some of them, it's hard to understand. What I loved about that jingle was you could understand it, you could understand all the words. It was catchy mm. and memorable. And I think over time, so I, I, I give that a very high grade. I mean, I, yeah, please submit it. Come on, yeah! Yeah! you heard the man. Yeah. Dial pound law. That's, that's all. all. Hey, come <laughs> on, Morgan and Morgan. Okay, listen. We've had our cup filled of humor of, of of the law. We learned about the law, and then we got to hear Eddie's jingle submission to Morgan. Eddie's gonna and Morgan. win a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah, and let, really cool. let all your listeners know that if they want to submit, the contest goes on until late September. They just need to go to morganjingle.com or anywhere for the people on social media. We don't want them to and know get that. Get your hundred hundred thousand dollars. We just bleeped you, John Morgan. Yeah. Sorry about. They we don't want, we want that. Eddie to win. No more submissions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're just, just kidding. kidding. <laughs> I just do what I was told. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, one of our favorite guests, John Morgan of Morgan and Morgan. Uh, thank you very much, as always, and we'll talk to you again hopefully in a month or two. Take care of everybody in Nash Vegas, please. All right. There is John Morgan, everybody. Morgan and Morgan. Sing it with me. Dial pound law. That's all. This is a